I hope your day is full of Skittles and M&Ms and gumdrops and gumballs and jawbreakers and airheads and warheads. It's a candy episode, motherfuckers. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shank. I'm Sarah Weinshank. We have an amazing episode of Shank for you this week with the one, the only comedian, Mark Norman. But before we get into this week's episode of Shank with Mark Norman, there's just a few things I want to tell you about. One... This bitch and friends in the main room of the comedy store, 314, fire lineup. It's me, Kim Congdon, Ali McCoskey, Josh Potter, Ryan Sickler, Greg Fitzsimmons, Ian Edwards. We've sold out every show. Get those tickets sooner rather than later. And then April 18th, we're coming to the main room again. So far, it's me, Kim, Whitney Cummings, and Beth Stelling. And we're going to be adding a lot more. So look out. Buy the tickets sooner rather than later because we've sold out every time, guys. Uh, Before we get into this week's episode of Shank with Mark, there's just one thing I want to tell you about. And that's, oh, yeah, socks. Oh, yeah. Are you wearing socks right now? If you're not, you're a dirty little piggy. And uh, you need to ask yourself why why you think that that's okay. You think it's okay to go sockless to be raw dogging your shoes? You need socks. They protect your most valuable assets. Your toes, toes are a form of currency in 2024, guys. Protect them, but do it in a stylish way by buying a pair of socks from Oh Yeah. Whether you're into alligators or flamingos, there's a pair of slippers or socks for you. I'm obsessed with the alligator slippers. They're one of my favorite pairs. I wear them all the time. Shop OhYeah.com. That's three O's, H-Y-E-A-H.com. Discount code Sarah10, S-A-R-A-10. And guys, um, before we get into this week's episode of Shank with Mark Norman, I just want to remind you, please support the Patreon, patreon.com slash Sarah Weinchank. Buy some merch. Um, All of it is in the link tree on my Instagram at Princess Shank. Um, All right, guys, let's do it. Let's get into this week's episode of Shank with the one and the only comedian Mark Norman. Here it is, guys. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Shank. I'm Sarah Weinshank, and today's guest is the one, the only comedian, Mark Norman. Hey, hey, good to be here. It's the return of Mark Norman. Yeah, good to be back. It's weird. The only time we really converse is over a microphone. A microphone, and then the last time I saw you was at the strip club in Vegas before I got kicked out. Skankfest. Skankfest. Yeah, that was a wild, wild after party. That was a wild after party. I have a like a drunken memory of at one point slapping a stripper's ass. And you were standing right there, and then it got kicked out moments later. You, girls can't do that. No, I could. Okay. I remember being like, "This feels, this is fun." And yeah. then I, and then you know what happened, and it got kicked out. Yeah, yeah. That Should was we get a, into it? Sure. I got a big bit out of it. You it's like did. My, one of my big jokes because <laughs> it was such a funny scenario. But um, to paint a picture, the every skank fest they had the after party at a strip club every night called peppermint hippo whoa was that what it was called no i remember the name i don't remember the name it was the worst night of my life mark yeah of course i remember the name i was crying in the strip club saying i'm not a bad person you got karen right out of there i got karen out of there for touching a black lady's weave I've talked about it on several podcasts, so oh, okay. most of my listeners know the full story of what happened. Have you Do you made know a... the full story of what happened? No, I just knew you were uh, you were a bit distraught that <laughs> I was, night. I was crying and I had grills in. It was bad. Wow, you got reverse Rosa Park. I did. No, what happened was, okay, so we were all on the party bus. You remember being on the party bus. You gotta love the, the party bus is funner than the party. The party bus was the best part of the night for me. Always. The second I walked into the strip club, that's when shit went downhill for me. But so we're we're sitting in the party bus, everything's fine, and there weren't enough seats, so I had to sit on Jamar Neighbor's lap. Hey, you could do worse than the old neighbors, huh? <laughs> so, I'm sitting on Jamar's lap. It's like sitting on a stool upside down. <laughs> and he uh, he looks across at this girl that's sitting across from us and goes, are you a stripper? Mm-hmm. And she was instantly offended because she was not a stripper. Ouch. And she was a black woman. And she said, you're asking the only black woman on the bus if she's a stripper. And she thought that Jamar was my boyfriend. Oh. So she, before we even got to the strip club, was already mad at me because she thought that my boyfriend, Jamar, who wasn't even my boyfriend, (laughs) uh, was calling her a stripper. Uh Uh-huh. And then we got to the strip club and... All of her friends were pissed off, too. Like, I had these, there was these pissed off lesbians coming at me being like, the man that you're with 
Wait, you can just say lesbian. <laughs> they you were don't have mad. To say pissed off. They lesbian. were mad. It was a different. It was a different energy. A pissed off lesbian is different than just a lesbian, Mark. Okay. Well, am I right or am I wrong? Tell that to Ellen. <laughs> She's terrified. <laughs> but yeah, no. All right, keep going. This is riveting. Is you it, don't is know it the backstory. Is it offensive to be called a stripper as a woman? Uh, well, this lady was offended. She was offended by everything I did this entire night and everything okay. that everyone did. Got it. She was already pissed before we got to the club. Ah. Uh-huh. So then her pissed off lesbian friends, or lesbians as you call them, come up to me and they go, the man that you're with is a nightmare. I can't believe that's your boyfriend. Wow. And, and then DeMar gets painted as being this demon. And in his defense, she looked like a different girl who was at, on the bus the day before who was an actual stripper. They had the same face. Oh, okay. So there it was an innocent mistake on sure. DeMar's part. Sure. So we thought that she was just going to brush it off, but she didn't. And then everyone was coming up to me being like, the man that you're with is a pig. Like Whoa. they were all mad, right? And I didn't know. I'm like drunk and at skink fest on mushrooms, having the time of my life. Yeah. I'm like la 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 la. So I go to try to make things better, and I'm like, "Hey, are you mad?" And I went like this, and when I went like this, I touched the back of her hair. Oh, come on! And then she goes, because I was on mushrooms. I was like, "Hey, are you mad?" Like that, and yeah. she goes. Oh, hell no. And then she goes crazy. And then all of her friends go crazy. And then I start crying. And then in the middle of crying, I thought we all came together because we were all on the bus together. So I thought the champagne in their bucket was also like my champagne. So then I I touch her hair and then I pour some of my her champagne. And it's like the last bit of the champagne. And she's like yelling at me and turn into like this whole thing. And then I start crying that I'm not a bad person. Wow. So I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what part of the night you saw. I but saw the crying and, the, said, and they thrown did, out the jazz. I got Jeff. I got thrown out. Yeah, I got thrown out of a strip club in Vegas. That's hard to do, especially as a lady. A lady. A guy can do a, a honk honk and get thrown <laughs> yeah. out, but you went full on. Please like me, and it was <laughs> Please a spiral. Like me. It, yeah. They gaslit you because you're not a bad person, but no. they they worked you. I felt like Larry David. I yeah. felt like Larry David. And then when I told Ian Fidance, I was like, I feel like Larry David. He was like, Ian Fidance is well liked. I mean, he said uh, Larry David is well liked, oh, <laughs> and I was like, no, oh, that damn. hurts even more. <laughs> yeah, we need to we need a video of you getting pulled out on camera footage, and then ba ba da ba da ba da. Yeah, and then they re- they gave me a babysitter for the rest of the the night. It Damn. was like an intern ah. at gas. And he was in charge of me. I don't even remember his name. I was like crying with him when we were drinking wine eating grilled cheese afterward. You had a handler. I had a, yeah. A Chelsea handler. Well, we need we need to talk to this kid because I bet that was the highlight of his life. He's yeah. probably some incel who's like, hey, I get to talk to a, a real life lady. Yeah, we were drinking white wine at the, <laughs> cr- while I was sobbing. Okay, so wait. Pretty good intern job. Better than waiting on Lewis hand and foot. Yeah, yeah. That was the rest of his night was being my babysitter yeah uh so what what was your perception of what happened well i was <laughs> <You're> uh just, <laughs> i was drunk as well and it's skank fest it just i'm got ian ian finance at a headlock you're looking <laughs> at boobs and i would see over to my right that you guys were all like in a, a skerfuffle there was a lot of screaming and women being mad so i just was like i'm staying away from that and then kim congdon's there whenever she's there you don't know if she's got a knife or a pistol <laughs> or what so i just kind of Kept my distance. Oh, right. You're like, uh, it was very like um, Jerry Springer energy. Yeah. It was exactly. trashy. Totally. It was one of those things. I think about that night all the time. Yeah, well, it's one of those for me. You got shafted, I, I think, got a shafted. little bit. But plus, Jamar's got a mohawk on and he's shirtless and he's running around. <laughs> yeah. So it was a it was a lot of chaos. Yeah, and then they thought that Jamar because they they villainized me and Jamar from the second we got on, after we got off that bus. Well, why are they on our party bus? This is a skank fest sanctioned because party, you crazy whores. Get off were, our bus. Because Jordan Jensen knew one of their friends, oh. and they were in town for a Beyonce concert. Jordan Jensen, those lesbians? Get out of here. <laughs> I don't believe it. They were in town for a fucking Beyonce concert. Oh, this is they worlds were all colliding. They coked out doing, at the Beyonce concert, and I was on mushrooms trying to make things right. Yeah, but there's a big difference between skank fest clientele and Beyonce clientele. <laughs> Until, you yeah. know, we shouldn't be co-mingling. Mixing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still recovering from that. Incident. I hear you. <clears throat> What's going on with you? Oh, well, it's Valentine's Day. I Are got you doing a, anything? I got a hot date with the wife later. What are you guys doing? We're going on a dinner date and uh, then some. Oh. But I don't want to say too much. About then. So you then planned we- it? 
Kind of, yeah. I <laughs> <No>. had help. <laughs> I had help. Did she plan it? I planned it more than her. So that's nice. I think I'm gonna go home and get a little dolled up. I feel like dressing up tonight. I might put on a gay blazer and a boot. A blazer and a boot? Yeah. I like it for Valentine's Day aesthetic. Have you ever had any bad Valentine's Days? Oh, sure. I mean, I was single for years and uh, just doing like the U ups. You know, the we've you all been up there. on a Valentine's Day stark. And I've had the, the, you know, those relationships that are going on too long, like a high school sweetheart that just won't fade out. And, and you're like, those and are sad. I've had a few like that. You're in a Thai restaurant at 8 30, yeah, it's opening open, no one's talking to each other. You're both pushing, you know, uh, pad Thai around. <laughs> That is so sad. The thought of just pushing an egg. Yeah. Trying to force the relationship that has ended. I know. And there's some old Asian lady waitress <laughs> who she's, her husband's been dead. He died in the rice patty 10 <laughs> years ago. And uh, yeah, so we've, we've had some bad ones. And then you got the single one where you go out and you're like, I will say women are pretty sad, sad. and so, horny. Sad and horny. So if you go to a bar, you can really uh, pick up a, a real a lady real, at a low point. A real sad woman. Yeah. You get a, yeah, you can get a, a sad lady's bl- a blowjob from a sad woman. Hey, that's the Most best likely. kind. The tears add lube. <laughs> So yeah, it's a it's a good it's a bad night for single women I think, and a good night for single, single men. men. Yeah, single women Valentine, and then they try to make it like better. They're like it's Galentine's Day. It's Ooh. like no, that is sad and dark. That it really is. You Galentine's know. Day. I was stoned. I was watching the news yesterday. I was I was leaving from the airport from my parents' house, and they just had the news on all the time. And, and it was they did a whole segment on Galentine's Day, and I'm like, what is the news? Well, how is this what? a segment? Wow, we just had a, a shooting with I a trans know. lady. Let's talk about that. You know, They're like Galentine's Day. Here are some great ideas. <laughs> yeah. Go on a picnic with your girlfriend. Oh. It's like this is sad and dark. A uh, uh, racial hate crime is less sad <laughs> yes. than that. Show then, that. Then Galentine, and I hate the name. Oh, it's horrible. It's it's very live laugh love. Ugh. It's like a white lady mom <laughs> yeah. phrase. It's like we're taking back the Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is. Let's be honest. It, the whole thing's. A charade. It's, yeah, it's cooked up by Madison Avenue. We got to sell chocolate. We got to sell flowers. We got to sell cards. I know. That's all. I mean, look at a wedding ring. You know, it's like, hey, you got to have two months worth of rent. Well, who, who made these arbitrary rules? Yeah, wedding rings are fucking expensive. I don't know. I've it's never crazy. had to buy one. Some poor like African you. kid in a, in a mine <laughs> in uh, Nigeria. Had Blood to, diamonds. <laughs> yeah, get blown up over this thing. And some girl's like, it's not big enough. <sighs> That's so dark. I know. It's all dark. That's the theme tonight. Dark. I walked into a stranger's vomit one Valentine's Day. It Whoa. was the end of our rela- I was on a date with this guy. It was the end of our relationship because he took us to a steakhouse that overlooked the freeway on ramp in Pomona. You know? <laughs> and I was like, this is not going to work for me. Whoa. And Look then I you. stepped in a stranger's vomit. Nice. And then it was the worst Valentine's Day. Jeez, how, how how'd it go with Jamar after that? <laughs> Damn, We're that is sad. <laughs> Looking out to the freeway is bad because you're like, they're going somewhere and this relationship is going, going nowhere. No- <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I've had some sad Valentine's Day. Well, Valentine's is like New Year's. It's a lot of buildup. Like, it's going to be this magical night where everything comes together, but it's just another fucking night on the calendar. New Year's? Have you had any good New Year's? I like how you're holding both mics. Sorry, I'm holding I'm on like, for I feel life. like you're flying the table. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> DEI. I got the job as a pilot. Um, yeah, I've had, a, had some, some great New Year's and some bad ones. New Year's is tough because you're just trying to look for that perfect party and... And then before you know it, the night's over. You spend the whole night looking for the part. You spend the yeah. whole week looking for what to do. Exactly. And everything's got to be perfect. It's like a wedding. And then you're like, if you just chill and enjoy yourself, it'll actually be a lot better. How long did you have to plan your wedding for? Well, the lady did all of it. Cause That's I'm, nice. Marriage, to me, is kind of antiquated and weird, but she wanted to do it. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'll yeah, do yeah. it, but you got to plan the wedding. And she was like, done. Yeah. And she it's killed it. It's probably fun. It was her. it was super well. I think she was pretty stressed out, but I gotta say she <laughs> she did a it. great job. We had a hell of a wedding. We had a great live band. We had oyster sp- uh, spread. We had great food, bar, French Quarter, New Orleans. Perfect night. That's awesome. Did you guys go on a honeymoon? Oh yeah, I went to South Africa. How was that? It was incredible. Did Uh-oh. you see any animals? We got a we got an interruption. Oh hey, what is this? Uh, what is that? Coffee. Oh sure. 
More coffee, you sure? Yeah, I'm crazy, Mark. Uh, you pretty... saw me in the strip club. Yeah, good point. Spike that coffee. I don't Put know. Some mushroom, I, have, uh... I have no limits. <laughs> I'm going to go touch someone's weave after this. <laughs> Look out. Heads up. Uh, yeah, speaking of weave, I was in Africa. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> good, um, good transition there. <laughs> we went to Amsterdam first to like kick it off with some shrooms and some so Anne Frank. Fun. And <laughs> How was Amsterdam? I've never been. What? I've never been. You I know. You thrive there. I know. I'm afraid I just won't come back. Yeah, you'll get put in an attic and scooped up. <laughs> that, and that's it, baby. Are you Jewish? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're done. I'll be journaling. <laughs> Hell of a diary. Except I'd like to read it's your all diary. online. <laughs> yeah, right. It just tweets. <laughs> the blog of Weinstein. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, Amsterdam is cool. It's really pretty, but it rained the whole time, so it kind of fucked us. And then we flew to South Africa, which is a bitch of a flight. I didn't factor that in. How long? It was like nine hours or something. Whoa. I so wonder that... how long from like New York. That sounds like a nightmare. New York's probably about 11. Okay. But we flew in, and once we got to South Africa, we were like, this is awesome. We went to Cape Town, hit the beach, and then we got on a little flight and went to Safari. <sighs> And that oh, was the I'm so highlight. jealous of the safari. The safari is what I was going to ask you about. I'm not an animal guy. I'm not a wilderness guy. But this was so cool and well done. You wake up and there's elephants out your big giant window and they're just bathing in a river. And you're like, That what is the so fuck? cool. It was amazing. Did you have like a special safari outfit? Like a big hat and like a tropical shirt? Not really. <laughs> I, I think I had like an improv sweater or a comedy store shirt. But the, the guy was a South African guy. He's like, he sounds Australian. Is like, I hey, we're gonna see lions today, you know. And you, you saw get in a, lions? we saw lions, you get in a Jeep, and the Jeep is open, by the way. No doors, no roof, and this is a, a leopard right there walking by. Any giraffes? We saw a ton of giraffes, ton of elephants, ton of monkeys, ton of uh zebra, warthogs. That's fucking sick. I wouldn't have picked South Africa, but now that I know about the safari. Oh yeah, and the resort is all inclusive, so I just drank all day. And then I would swim. You get a, you get your own pool. You swim, and then you go out into the safari jeep, and you're just drunk. Like, whoa! There's a ring-tailed lemur. No. Oh yeah. That is awesome. It was really something special. Then you come back, and there's dinner, and you you all come together. The whole resort has a big dinner, and you get to meet everybody. And Did you like that? That was a little much. I don't know if I want to meet everyone at the resort. That part sucked. <laughs> then once a, my fucking dumb wife goes, hey, you know he's a comedian, and no! I was like. Oh! Anything but that. I know. So then they're all like, whoa, do you know Dane Cook? What's <laughs> no. he like? I'm like, God, I was enjoying my honeymoon. No. Brutal. Tell us a joke. Hey, we got a comedian here. <laughs> tink, 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 tink. He's going to do a little chunk on, on leopards. No. Like, no, no. That is a literal nightmare. The only thing worse than a leopard is a cougar. Am I right? <laughs> you know, brutal. I try to avoid for as long as I, what do you do if someone asks what you do and you don't want to tell them you're a comic? Uh, Uber, well, Uber's tough because uh, they always go, what are you doing in town? And I go, I'm here for a wedding. And they're like, really? A on, a, on a Monday. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, who's getting married? And I'm like, my dad? I always panic, you <laughs> yeah. know? So uh, I go wedding, but then if they ask what I do, I say I'm in sales because it's kind of vague. Oh, that's so smart. I should start saying sales. But then they go, what do you sell? And then you got to go medical supplies. That's so boring, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then do they stop asking? Usually, but the, sometimes you get the, oh, my brother-in-law is in medical no. supplies. What are you in, 3M, dental? What I'm like, ah. <laughs> Heart devices. Anyways. Yeah, uh, you just make it, I'm in the wine shank, uh, <laughs> wine shank industry. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I try not to tell. Or I'll just be like, I'm a writer. And then the oh, problem yeah. is, like, what do you write? It's like, nothing. Yeah, sometimes I've done that, then I say travel blogs. That's a good one. But then they go, where have you been? And you got to go, oh, I've been to Wuhan. I came back with a cough. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. That's like, I just got a car. And in between, um, it was funny because they went to go do a credit check on me, but they really went to go look at my social media. And then when they came back. Oh, no. When they came back, it was a totally different energy. Yeah. They was like, so, how long have you been doing comedy for? 
And they all think they love comedy, but then they hear one podcast and they're like, whoa, you said the R word like four times. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I know. This is, the, this is why I held my real identity from you because I don't want to deal <laughs> yeah, with this shit. Yeah, I don't want to deal with this shit. He gets in the car to show me how to work it. He goes, so, how's Joe Rogan? Uh, he's, like, he's a nice guy. Anyway, um, so how do I link the Bluetooth to the... <laughs> exactly. I don't know. That doesn't matter. I need. I've been here for fucking four hours, bro. <laughs> Buying a car takes forever. Oh, it's a nightmare. I bought mine online and just got in. Got you out. did? Yeah. You didn't see it before it arrived? No, it's like hookers. I just ship it. <laughs> no, but I bought a, a classic car. I bought like a vintage car. So what kind? Uh, nineteen seventy three BMW O two. What's an O two? It's a it's a weird name. It's the model. It's not the year, but it's called the two thousand two. And it has two doors and a two two stroke two cylinder something like that. So it's called 2002, and it's one of the coolest cars. It saved BMW. If you pull it, I don't know if you guys have access, but pull Can it. It's pull a cool it photo. Yeah. Oh, this this is like the kind of car that very close to the kind of car I drove. I learned how to drive in. Oh, really? Well, my dad had an '87, so not that close, but it just reminds me a little bit of the body style. Yeah. So Beamer, struggling company in the '50s and '60s, and then they brought they pulled out this car and it saved the whole company. And now that's why we have Beamer are still successful today. Well, that's crazy. Is that your main form of transportation, or do you have another car, too? It's the main form in New York because, you know, you don't drive. Right. So I'll take it out to, like, Jersey or upstate or Long Island. It's like your weekend car. Yeah. Get in that thing. And the wife hates it because it's, like, it no heat, work. <laughs> no radio, no seat belts, no insurance. No seat belts? It has the seat belt, but it, it's just, like, a fucking string with a hook on it. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, but you know, you have Fuck fun. It. I've never gotten into a wreck. Yeah, I, I knock right. on wood. Good call. Shouldn't have said that. I'm all Fuck. paranoid though. And I drink. Do not drink <sighs> and drive, Mark. Well, that's the beauty of a stick shift. It keeps you locked no, in. No, that is crazy. I can't text. I can't talk. I'm just I'm, I'm that's locked in, crazy. baby. Crazy. Oh yeah. Do you know how to drive? I mean, how long have you been driving stick shift? I taught myself on that car. I was so bored during the pandemic. I'm sorry. You bought the car, never looking at it. Yep. You're like, yeah, that one. Yep. And then you're like, I got some time to kill. I'll teach myself how to drive it. Yeah. You bought it, but you didn't know how to drive it? Pretty much. That's fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. It was wild. And it's a hard car. It's a 50-year-old car, so it's a hard car to learn how to drive. And you, I'm in Manhattan. So people are like, get out of the way, That's bitch. why your wife hates it. She's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He doesn't really know how to drive it. He got it offline. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to learn how to drive, uh, learn how to do something, just throw yourself into it. Like, you don't know Mandarin. If I put you in China for six weeks, you would learn Mandarin. I don't think I personally would. Right. I think I come back being like, so I'm fucking this Mandarin guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he taught me a few words, but that's all I know. All right, all right. You might have a point there. But <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, if we cracked a book every day and did tutoring for two weeks, it would be hard to learn, man. But if you're in it, I think you pick it up more. Yeah, if you're just submersed in it. We need another pandemic so that I can learn Mandarin. There you go. No, but I tried to teach myself how to play the keyboard during the pandemic. I tried that too. I couldn't. I couldn't stick with it. I couldn't stick with it. What's wrong with us? I don't know. I had lessons. I had uh, I got video tutorial. Well, this is really dark. I financed the keyboard. This is I had no money, and I was like, I want to have a piano. Yeah. This was probably like six or seven years ago, and I go, I'll finance the piano. Oh, so wow. I'm making payments on this oh. on this keyboard, but then I never taught myself how to play it. So then it was just sitting in my kitchen, and it was like this sad reminder of this thing I financed uh, that I don't know how to play. And so I, w eventually one day I said, that's it. It's, I'm selling it. And I just sold it. Wow. But, but, um, Good for you. You got rid of it. I got rid of it, but I would love to have it back. No, you wouldn't. You say that. You like the idea of having it. I like it, the idea of a piano. Like, I imagine this. It's Christmas. <laughs> I come down in a gown. Everyone's like, whoa, there she is. Right. I'm, like, going to play Winter Wonderland and everyone's going to watch. That's my fantasy. I know. There's something cool about tickling <laughs> yes! those ivories. You know, you're at a party. You're like, hey, hey uh, Sarah, there's a piano over there. Oh, I didn't notice. Then you just pop that top <laughs> yeah! off. And you're just doing a rock around the clock. And everybody's like, holy, holy shit. shit. And the party starts. And there's a yes! girl dancing on the piano. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. I know. The I wanted that, The piano fantasy is real. Uh, we had the same fantasy. Yeah, dude. When I was... Uh, when I was in, I want to say like first grade or second grade, my cousin locked me in the bathroom and she said, I'm going to tell you what sex is. And I was like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. She said sex is when 
a woman lies down on the bed and a man plays the piano for her. <laughs> So that's what I thought sex was for like years. That's adorable. I know. And I think that a lot of women would prefer that than yeah. actual sex. Yeah, put your dick away. When are you gonna tickle the ivories? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's uh that's kinda weird. But it is weird. Kids are fun. See, that was pre cell phone. Yeah. You know, so we had to do weird shit like that. We had to like make up stuff. And we believed it. We believe it. Now you're like, what's sex? Oh, Oh, oh my good God. God. Jesus. It's I'm too, too young. much. Too much. I saw porno pretty young and it, it I, How old? I think I was like eleven. That but it was young. like some hardcore fucking. Hardcore and fucking. I think it was. Do you a remember much. the one I like, remember it vividly. Do you remember like the, the premise? No. You just no. remember the dick. No, I remember the I'm boobs like, so what was and the, the storyline? <laughs> yeah. That's such a woman thing to ask. Yeah, that's it was a guy was playing a piano. <laughs> okay, and the woman was laying on the bed. No. <laughs> Yeah, but are you going? So you know Joe Rogan? No. I'm just <laughs> are you going to go back there? Every time I'm at the mothership, I feel like I see it. Yeah, I've been going once a month. Oh wow, like a period. Yeah. There you go. You get my period, and then I go to Austin. <laughs> Coincide it. Smart. No, every time I go to Austin, I'm on my worst behavior. There was something about that city. It brings the evil out of you. You so know, like, everyone's like, a... like, just have another drink. I'm exactly. like, okay. I don't really drink that much when I'm in L.A., but when I go to Austin, I'm on my worst behavior. You know, you start smoking. You're around. You're smoking. You're eating hot links suddenly. Yeah. I'm like, what? I know. Well, you're living out of a hotel. You, you feel like a, a drifter. You're like, you want some brisket? Sure. Yeah, I brisket. I come back with, like, meat sweats. Yes. I come back, and I'm like, I need a detox. Right. I can't right. live there full time. And then even... Even when I'm doing productive shit, I feel naughty. Like, Rogan's like, let's get in an ice bath, then we're going to do a sauna, then we're going to lift with The Rock. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? I, this, this, this was, I should got to map this over like a month. I can't do this all in one day, and then a podcast, and then shows at night. It's crazy. And then you want to eat the best food you've ever eaten in your life? There's yeah. lots of good restaurants. Great food, great restaurants. Have you been to the Sushi Scratch? I have. That was... And pasta bar? Have you been to pasta bar? I have not, but Brian Simpson took me to the sushi, and it was pretty the amazing. sushi will fuck you up. So good, and they present it so well, and I, I was I was the guy who was too on because I was uncomfortable because I grew up in Louisiana, and <laughs> yeah. I'm a dweeb. And I was like, hey, look at this guy. What do you, what do you got, eel? Uh, yeah. Watch out, it might be electric. <laughs> and they're like, shut up. You know, soft music playing. It is. It's very, like, it's an experience. Oh, yeah. And I want to, I'm so fat and gay. I'm like, Sit, give it out Give faster. me a hoagie and let's keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it happened. Yeah, so that's really fun. There's lots of good fucking food, though. They also have the burger place. Not a damn chance. Have you tried that? No. Oh, my God, you have to. Okay. It's this, Philip, who makes, who owns Sushi Scratch, has this hamburger called Not a Damn Chance. And it's the best, 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 best smash burger in Austin. Man, you know the chef names. Yeah, I hung That's, out with them. I've wow. been going once a month, Mark. Yeah, I guess so. You're in. Did, now you, do you think it's the next hub? Is L.A. out, Austin's in? Is it a flash in the pan? Is it over? Is it here? What I do you think, think? I think Austin, I think Austin's a major city for comedy now. I think it's going to be, I, I don't know if I'm going to fully move there, but it's, it's L.A., Austin, New York. Don't you think? Oh, interesting. Over Chicago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you can get so much stage time. Can in you really? In Austin? Well, I get I mean, like five sets a night. What? Yes. At the Vulcan, the Mothership, like the a sunset, combination, like the a, between City. between Mothership, Vulcan, Sunset. Okay. And then when I'm in LA, I don't get sets like that. No, LA's so, tough. LA's harder, yeah. And you you're like in there. Yeah, I'm in LA, but I started in LA, so I've mm. yeah. But, wow, okay. uh, but it's easier to get better at stand up in Austin. So I like to go once a month because I can tighten up my material. It's harder to do that in LA because you're not gonna, I'm not going to get up five times. Yeah. All right. Wow. I didn't know you could get up that much. Yeah. But are there people at the Vulcan? You know, sometimes <laughs> I show up there and there's four people and uh, Hans Kim is crying. <laughs> it just depends on the night. Okay. I've gone to the Vulcan and it's been packed, and I've gone to the Vulcan and it hasn't been. All right, all right. The Sunset Room, um, Red Band's new club, they they added a curtain, so it's like to the stage, so that it's a helps. little smaller now. It makes a huge difference. That because uh, that's a big ass room and it's, it's tall. It's a tall. It's the perfect room for music. But the first time I did stand up in there, I was like, I'm scared. I don't oh, know. Yeah. It was a different energy. But yeah, they added a curtain. It's a lot. It's a lot better now. Okay, good, good. All right, man. I'm going back. I'm excited, and you can do all the pods, Segura and Pazitsky and. Uh... 
Rogan, Kill Tony. There you go. All of them. Yeah, what's his face? Danny Brown Danny and uh, Brown. Laura Compton's boobs. Oh, yeah, Laura Compton, the dating show yeah. with Laura Compton. I did that one. It got like half a million views or really? a million and a half views. Yeah, so oh, really? it's popping. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I just wore sunglasses so I wouldn't stare. I've never met her. She's but, not very nice. But when I meet her, I'm going to wear sunglasses so I can stare. Yeah, they're. Uh... When I do that, I'll do the Norman. They'll be like, titties are tittying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are out there and uh, they're real. They are. Oh, yeah. Realer than that black lady's weave. I'll <laughs> Never tell you that. forget. Never forget. <laughs> Literally my 9 11. Yeah. You know, it's bad when you have to start being like, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> I came with Jamar. I'm not racist. <laughs> I was sitting on Jamar's lap. I'm definitely not racist. Yeah, right? Does that count for anything? I know. And there is a racial component there with the black lady weave. It's, and it's then, like, a... the white bitchy privilege lady exactly. that thinks it's okay to touch her. I know. I saw her see the way that she perceived me. And I knew that there was no having her perceive me any other way. It's hard to win over a lady that hates you. You it's know. so hard. It's so hard. It's harder to, than winning over a man that hates you. I'll oh, tell you that. 100%. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, no wrath like a woman scorned. A pissed off woman? Well, that... she... Sorry. No, go on. She's smart because they obviously had it out for you. And then once she got the, the hair touch, she was like, we got him. It's, <laughs> it's almost like the- She was uh... waiting for yeah, it's like this the insurrection with Trump. You know, it's like, all right, we hate this guy, grab him by the pussy, he's a piece of shit. Oh, the erection happened or insurrection happened. It's like uh it's almost a good thing for them. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. ironic because like everybody claims to hate it so much, but you're also like, We won. That's it. Yeah, Case that closed. was it. I got kicked out. Yeah. I got kicked out of a strip club. It I saw hurts. It. I saw it in real time. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been kicked out of a strip club? Uh Probably, yeah. I'm sure. When I was 18, we used to go to New Orleans, and we were dumb. One time, my friend, we went on my friend's birthday when he was 18, and when you're it's your birthday, they do a test where they all the women bring you on stage. He was in basketball shorts, and if no. you if they dance on you, and if you get a boner, you lose. So they put up all bunch of money, and uh, I can't remember how it goes, but they put up a bunch of money, and if you if he gets a boner, you lose the money, and if he doesn't get a boner. You get to keep the money. He got a boner. He, he got a boner. And everyone just waiting to see if he gets a boner. Yeah, it's very. Uh, That's a very aggressive game. It was aggressive, but it sounds fun, kind of. Though. It was awesome. We had a great time. I mean, it's totally sexual assaulty, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No one cares if it's on a guy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, and we were all enjoying it. Have you seen that video? The girl twerking on the guy who got who jizzed. No. Oh, Can we pull that up? Oh man. And the guy's like, he owns it. He's like, yeah, Jizz, what do you want from me? No. The girl was an excellent twerker. He's He just owned the fact that he jizzed. One time I dry humped a guy and he came. He no dry way. Humped me. He dry humped me and he came. What? And it was the worst because I was like, can we just have sex? Yeah. He was wow. like, He was like oddly religious and weird about sex. So he there just you go. dry humped me to completion. And I was like, this is, I'm chafed. Can yeah. you get off of me, dude? Was he Mormon? It was weird. Did Whoa. you find the, the twerking video? Oh, it's out there. It's tough to find uh, something with just, those search it's terms. It's fine. It's fine. It was but a black lady, I white show guy. You, um, we can I use mean, our imaginations. Uh, it was pretty popular. It, went, it did the rounds. I tried Google, and it was giving me websites that I probably can't show. On. Oh, that's okay. I don't want to get oh, got taken it, got down. It. Yeah, don't get taken down. But, it, you know, I'll, I'll send you the link. Send me the link. I'll, we, I'll watch, and we can figure it out. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a compliment. The guy came, you know. He he thought you were hot and came. Yeah, there is a bad. It, there is something that feels bad when when a d- dude doesn't come. Oh yeah, you gals really get buttered by that. Really take it personally. Mm-hmm. Same with the not getting it up. Yeah. And you're like, hey, welcome to our world. We never get women <laughs> off. We deal with it, it. it. Yeah, that's true. But women are like, you, what are you, gay? I mean, I've been called horrible things when I can't Well, but come. it's also because sometimes it's like people are on SSRIs. What's that? Uh, antidepressant. It makes oh. it harder to come. Obviously. True, y- true. Your serotonin levels are in order because you're not on one. No, I don't. You're, you're you like, what? Them? Yeah. SSRI. I'm on Prozac. I'm on Prozac, baby. Really? I'm on Prozac. Why do you think, how do you think I uh, got over the 
incident from oh, the peppermint yeah. hempo. <laughs> you think I did that naturally, Mark? I think we could work through it. I think the, <laughs> the pills are a Band-Aid. Look, we've Maybe. all been sad. Maybe. You got to work through it, and that's the only way to conquer it, or else you're just going to be sad. You're putting a that's Band-Aid. That's true. That's true. But you we can't can just this. go off of them willy-nilly. You got to taper off of them. Oh, okay. Well, can you drink on these? Yeah. All right. That's good. Good news, you yeah. can drink on them. <laughs> Always good to add a depressant. <laughs> to when you're already depressed. Yeah, yeah. Fuel on the fire. Why but not? Just saying, I think we could if I was a therapist, I would recommend against it. I I agree. I don't think it's I don't think it's the um ultimate solution. Yeah. I think that if you're struggling and you need help during a period of time, it's there and then you don't have to be on it for forever. Yeah, I just worry it atrophies your strength, like your mental strength. Right. You know, like, hey, we'll just use this. As, as, a, as a Band-Aid. As a Band-Aid. It's like a steroid. It's better to just build I'm your juicing, own. juicing, baby. You're juicing. You're mentally juicing. <laughs> I'm juicing and loving it, though. Is it? Do you feel happy? Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. But see, that should be something you snort on a Saturday night just to get a get a buzz going. And no, because I'm afraid of fentanyl. That's true. Good point. Take an SSRI. Everything's just a little... I had a bachelor party and my all my friends. I've never done blow, but they all got a bunch of blow, and then they had to test it, which took all the fun out of it. Yeah, you got to do a lab test. Like you become I a know. fucking scientist exactly. to do the drugs. It, but it's like wearing a condom. You want to just get in there, and now we're like, oh, we got to be precautionary. <laughs> take a test. I know, yeah, and also, well, my friends. I have some friends that still do coke. I think that's crazy, but. I'm like, did you guys test it? Like, no. Well, I watch everyone else do it first. Mm. And if they're alive, I'm like, is that how fentanyl wow. works? I'm like, you just wait and see if your friends die? That's crazy. If they're alive and bouncing off the walls, you're like, I guess it's safe. <laughs> Let's go. Why do we not give a shit about the fentanyl? I know, like, everybody's paid off by the Sackler family. we're drug addicts. I know, we're but I'm saying- We're a country of addicts. I, of course we are. We're a country of addicts and guns and overweight and trans and all this. <laughs> But I thought the government cared about us. You know, that's how you know they don't give a shit. They're Legalize letting us all do coke. Fl- fentanyl. Well, if we legalized it. I don't know about that. Well, Portland's not doing it. great. Yeah, Portland. Portland. Yeah, it's like saying, hey, my kids are a little out of control. We'll make them. We'll, we'll just give them heroin. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. But oh, look, I, I'm no politician. I'm just saying. The, the fentanyl is killing half the country. We were so wound up about COVID. This is killing more people, and it's available, you know, at a it's pharmacy. It's scary. Very scary. No one gives a shit. I'm tired of, you know, the other thing I don't like about Portland? I don't want to see any more teenagers with pit bulls curled up. <laughs> yeah. What is that? I don't know. Pit bulls make me nervous. I'm with Michael Vick. Kill them all. Pit bulls? Like, homeless, homeless teens with pit bulls? Bad luck. Bad combo. Bad luck. Norm Macdonald had a great bit about it. It's the longest walk in the world for the dog. Yeah, like, and you f- end up feeling bad for the dog. I don't give a shit about this scruffy honky. I'm worried about the pup. Yeah, I need to listen to Norm's bit. Oh, I've it's never an heard it. It's a classic. Norm was amazing. The king. Whatever the king. happened to him? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, stomach cancer. Was stomach? Was it stomach? Yeah. Oh, he was the funniest. If you watch, I'm a huge fan. If you watch old Letterman's of him, he's holding his stomach because he's in pain. But he never told anybody. He was. Yeah, you can probably find that. That I mean, is so. Who knows? When it, when when he died, we found out that he had cancer the whole time. Nothing made me more sad. I mean, I know what a badass. Like everyone's on this victim bullshit. Like, oh, I'm oppressed, and this guy uh, has cancer. It never brings it up. Never brings it up once. Amazing. Ugh, I loved the Norm Macdonald podcast that he did with Adam. Oh, so good. I that love that trashed Adam a whole time. Yeah, that was the best. Yeah. He would call him a, a Holocaust denier and Adam's <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> and I was like, God damn it. My mom thinks I'm a Holocaust denier now. <laughs> yeah, you know what's great about Norm is uh, all these, you know, like they'll do on YouTube, like, a black kid hears Pink Floyd for the first time. And I, they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, I love those videos. Those, those are, are my favorite videos to watch. They're great, but now they're doing it with Norm. And they're like, this dude's fucking hilarious. And you're like, yeah, no shit. This they, guy's the, the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fun to watch them hear him they, for the first they're time. They're doing that now? Yeah. 
Can you send me that link? I want to watch it's that. Just type it in YouTube. Black kids norm. Okay, I will. It's all over. There's a there's a bunch of them. Because I like I love watching the black kids listening to different music for the first time. It's yeah. amazing. I know, and you're like, why are we so divided? Like a black kid should know about Led Zeppelin. Yeah, like why do? Uh, yeah. We we like uh, Killer Mike or who or, or Drake <laughs> yeah. or Kendrick yeah. Lamar or whatever you know. If you could pick um, a song to listen to for the first time ever again, what Jesus song would you pick? Christ, that's a tough one. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. WAP. No. Um, WAP. Uh, what <laughs> wet ass pussy? Yeah, I don't Is know. Is that what you that's, said? <laughs> that's a tough one. There's just so many great tunes out there, but I'm not Wap. really a, a music expert. Well, you don't know. I don't know, but I'd be able to pick one favorite? song. Huh. It's hard to pick just one song. Yeah, I couldn't do it with a movie either. I'm not good with nailing down that one thing. What about you? Well, last time I said Fleetwood Mac it would be a Fleetwood Mac song. I love Gypsy. You love that's, Gypsy? That's my top five favorite songs of all time. Gypsy's a good one. Would oh. you, if you could hear Gypsy for the first time again? Sure, that'd be great. That would maybe be a good one. I'm in, I'm in love with that, that Stevie Nicks voice. I know she's amazing. What a voice! Taylor Swift can suck it. So good. No, I'm just kidding. Good. I'm not a Swift hater. I just no, don't, don't care about it. Don't piss off her. the community; they'll come for us. Those Swifties are angry. So angry. Did you see on the internet? Now I'm bringing it back. But uh, this girl tweeted, "The way Taylor Swift sings and the words she says taps into a woman's heart." And she says all the things we're thinking. Do men have someone like that for them? And everybody wrote Norm. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Taylor Swift thing, here's the thing. Uh-oh. Lay it on. During me. the pandemic, your girl gave her a few listens while you were teaching yourself how to <laughs> how to drive stick. Yeah. I was um, acquainted. I was learning the Swift catalog. Oh, and let me tell you, please, it does do something. Okay, and I don't. I'm not happy about it. Eh, if you I'm like not, it, you like I'm, it. I'm a closet Swifty. I'm not gonna lead with the fact I'm a Swifty because I'm smart. Yeah, and I'm cool. I've... You can't. You can't lead with the fact you're a Swifty if you if you're cool. I bet if you went to a Swifty concert, <laughs> I would not you, be cool. You would love every minute of it. You would be like in. I'm tranced. crying. Yes, I have exactly. the friendship bracelets. Oh yeah, you'd be hugging other fat chicks. <laughs> you, you would love it. Like yeah. fucking, how much are the tickets though? Oh, it's got to be like two grand or I'm something. I'm not. It's like fuck it. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I remember Nikki Glaser. <laughs> Nikki Glaser was like, "Yeah, instead of freezing my eggs, I went to Taylor Swift concert seven times." <laughs> oh wow. That's how that's got to be like, you know, four grand, yeah. five grand for all that. Yeah. Well, she's loaded. Yeah. And Nikki, I think, is single, so I think she really taps into that <laughs> shit. Yeah, for sure. She loves She Taylor loves Swift. Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. She could be the Taylor Swift of comedy. She's like a pretty blonde lady who sings about or talks about heartbreak. That's true. That's true. Well, somebody, I started dating a guy, and he was like, don't Taylor Swift me. I was like, oh. oh well, she she's a verb now. I was like, we'll be good, and then yeah. I, won't, I won't tease Swift you if you're good. Well, here's the, the thing I don't get. All these men, she has like 12 guys she's dated, and she hates all of them. She writes a song. Maybe she's the problem. <laughs> Is that everyone knew ever thought? Maybe she's the common denom here? These Probably these guys are like, we just broke up. It, it fizzled out. Why am I well, an she asshole? Does ha she has thought of that because she has that song. It's me. I'm the problem. Oh. It's me. Oh, okay. Anti-hero. <laughs> Oh, all right, great. Well, she, at least so she's self-aware. One right. thing about Swift is she's self-aware. All right, all right, good. Good to have her back. I good like to that. Have her back. I mean, the Kelsey thing I'm is going to so, be ugly. I'm just like, oh yeah, the breakup. Oh yeah, I mean, he's going to hit her. You think? Yeah, <laughs> we're all rooting for it. She's getting CTE. That's going to be a twist. <laughs> that would be fucking insane. And the album comes out. It's called CTE. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I think he's used to black women, so he'll probably uh, raise that fist a little quicker. You don't think that they're going to make it? No, I don't think I'm so. so. I'm so gullible. I'm like, they're going to live happily ever after in a castle. There's going to be swans it's and horses. too perfect. Like, the, the hot or the popular blonde is dating the football, football player. player. It's kind of, it makes me a little nauseous. A little bit, yeah. I was like, can something, can you, one of you be bad? Like, dye your I hair know. black, get a something. tattoo or something. Yeah, give me some edge. Give me some edge. Well, Pierce you, your tongue. Did you see him uh, singing Viva Las Vegas? That doesn't even appeal to me at oh, all. Oh, it was, was so it cringy. 
He won the uh, you know the the Super Bowl, and he's like, "Viva Las Vegas!" <laughs> and she's sitting there like, "Oh yeah, yeah." No, can we find that? Please find something. Who's on the Google <laughs> machine here? Good lord, <laughs> the Google machine. But yeah, it's a little cringy. It feels a little forced. I'm not like a conspiracy queef. Oh, here it is. Oh, I hate it. No. No. He's so proud of himself. I just got. I think they cut to her at some point. Oh, she looks oh, like she's gonna throw yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I, way, would, that... I would be so embarrassed. Oh yeah, that's brutal. That's the best thought, she's ever looked. Was by that the way. was that <laughs> was that him singing? Yeah. That was singing. Because it was in Vegas and he won. So no, I know, but up. that was sad and dark. It was I'm bad. glad we brought that up. Yeah, sorry. That sorry. was whoa. But if that's what he's showing the world, no matter what's going on at the the household. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, Viva Las Vegas. It's so dark. Ah, uh, come on. That would be like. Yeah, that must have been painful for her to watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just keep to the football, buddy. Keep the helmet on. Let's talk about the pigskin, yeah. sweetie. <laughs> yeah, throw the ball, catch the ball. <laughs> yeah. Please don't talk. Yeah, that makes me feel like they're not going to make it to marriage. No. That, that video alone. What is I she, needed that. 35? I think, 36? 34. I 34. Think she's 34? Okay, those eggs are uh, starting to scramble a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she froze them. She's got the money. She definitely has the money. Hers are on ice. Yeah, 34. She's 34. Okay. I mean, I know a lady who had a baby at 43. Naturally? No. <laughs> but it happened. It is. Yep. It can happen. Would do you, you want kids? I think I do. Do you know how many? I'd like two. That's normal. Two is good. You know, you go to, you get to three, four, five, your whole Shit life's gets over. Weird. Yeah. She gets weird when Real you become weird. when you're outnumbered by them. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. that. Yeah, and yeah, two's good. They can play with each other. They can bond. Great. Great. But then you can have new material. From yeah. The experience. And not to be crass, but what's the point of marriage without them? Because now you're just like, well, we're tethered, and we like each other. But we're just gonna do this forever. <laughs> you yeah, know, no, you're watch right. Movies and the, and go to eat. You're right. I hear what you're saying. Do you want them? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, you'd be a fun mom. Yeah, I definitely want babies. Oh, I can see you out in this blue coat, getting the newspaper and Come pajamas. Come on, children. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell them about what happened at the strip club in 23. The, yeah. the skank fest stories. No one cares about. What a cool mom! My mom has big red glasses, short gray hair, <laughs> and uh, alligator earrings, and a muumu and Crocs. I could never alligator imagine her earrings? at Skankfest. Alligator earrings? She Are they these, actual alligators? Like, no, like dangly cartoon alligators. That's fun. Yeah, she's a fun lady. But if I saw my mom at Skankfest, I'd kill myself. Kim's mom always came to Skankfest. If my what? mom, my mom could never come to Skankfest. No. She'd be crying. Of course, of course. My mom's it's not like, a place for mothers. Uh, you got that right. <laughs> right? Of course, yeah. It's just a drug-fueled, like, Zach Amico shirtless doing a roast battle with Stapling blood on Stapling himself? Yeah. My mom would, like, slit her wrist if she saw that. <laughs> it's too much. Too much for a mom. It's... Keep the moms out of Skankfest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, Bonnie McFarlane can go. She's Christina a cool P. mom. She's a cool mom. You gotta be a cool mom to go to Skankfest. Wait a minute. There's Christina Pazitsky. Yeah. And then there's Esther Pavinsky. Yeah. Okay. These Polacks are tough to keep <laughs> up with. They're taking over. Well, yeah, see, the names are so similar. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I never realized that they're kind of similar. Well, that's why we go with Christina P. Yeah, it's so much easier. And Little Esther. Yeah. Great. Appreciate little Esther. it. Little Esther making a little Esther. She's pregnant. What? You didn't know that? Oh, the baby's going to be the same size. Yeah, I know. That's... You didn't know she was pregnant? No, good for her. Yeah, she's a, she's due soon. Whoa. Yeah. Pavit. But it was so crazy when she I found out she was pregnant because I was like, huh? I feel like she's a child. Yeah, of course. There, someone named Little is pregnant. You're like, that seems wrong. And she is little and she <laughs> talks and dresses like a little kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was like, well, I was like, oh, dude, we're getting old. When I saw Little Esther, I was like, shit, time's running out. It's going, baby. That clock get, will not stop. I got to get my club shot up.
<laughs> yeah, get a little yes. Columbine going yeah. down there. Sooner rather than later, sweetie. Oh, yeah. We need an Orlando <laughs> shooting, huh? Well, hopefully. You don't want a gay kid. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, that's our podcast. Oh, it's is a that funny it? one to end on. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Hey, she touched the black lady's hair. How about okay. that? Huh? I'm the I'm the I'm the problem. It's me. Yeah, there like you go. Like Taylor Swift. It's me. I'm the problem. Problem. Yes. Um, this comes out I think next week. So where can people find you? And what do you want to plug? Uh, I will be all over the road. MarkNormanComedy.com. Listen to We Might Be Drunk Tuesdays with Stories, and I'm coming to a town near you. I just announced new dates. So check out the site and queef it up. Queef it up, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. You can find me here every Wednesday on Shank and every Monday on This Bitch. Patreon.com slash Sarah Weinshank for bonus content. And uh, Kim Congdon and I have two big shows. The Main Room of the Comedy Store, 314. Um, this Bitch and Friends, it's me, Kimmy, Ali Makovsky, Greg Fitzsimmons, Ian Edwards, Josh Potter, Ryan Sickler. Wow, great group. It's a great group, yeah. And then also um, April 18th, it's me, Whitney, Beth Stelling, Kim Congdon, and we're adding men, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> Need some laughs here, yeah. folks. <laughs> you know what it is. Get the tickets sooner rather than later at Princess Shank. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.